Bonjour, chers amis. Bonjour à vous tous. Je crois que nous allons maintenant commencer. Et je vous souhaite la bienvenue dans ce séminaire que nous avons l'honneur d'accueillir. Et je suis heureux de vous accueillir ce matin, ou si c'est déjà l'après-midi là où vous êtes, bonjour ou, ou bonsoir. Mais je voudrais d'abord euh, euh, donner quelques euh, précisions sur euh, la partie technique, juste pour euh, euh, vous dire, si vous êtes connecté, vous pouvez choisir euh, la langue et puis obtenir... Euh, l'interprétation selon votre langue, vous choisissez votre langue et vous pouvez écouter les interventions dans votre langue. Nous allons aussi euh, vous dire que au cours de, de la session, vous avez la possibilité de poser des questions euh, aux intervenants et vous pouvez cliquer sur Q et R et poser votre question. Donc euh, aujourd'hui, nous avons l'honneur de vous accueillir dans ce séminaire organisé conjointement par euh, euh, l'Alliance pour le contrôle du tabac en Afrique. Et SMU à Tim. Et nous sommes... En, Heureux de vous dire que sur cette panel aujourd'hui, nous avons le professeur Lekan Ayoyoussouf, qui est bien connu dans la lutte anti-tabac, qui a longtemps travaillé sur le sujet dont nous allons débattre aujourd'hui. Et le professeur intervient à l'université de Pretoria l'université qui forme euh, en santé publique et qui a formé beaucoup de gens déjà sur le continent sur euh, la question de la lutte anti-tabac, l'ingérence de, de l'industrie du tabac et le plaidoyer. Nous avons... Bienvenue, professeur. Merci pour votre temps aujourd'hui. Nous avons aussi le docteur Boli, Docteur Francis Boli, qui est le secrétaire exécutif du réseau des ONG de, de lutte contre le tabac en Côte d'Ivoire. Docteur Boli est membre de l'équipe de surveillance de la Côte d'Ivoire. Et Docteur Boli est ici aujourd'hui pour aussi partager avec nous l'expérience qu'ils ont vécue en Côte d'Ivoire. Docteur Bolli, merci, soyez les bienvenus. Et nous avons troisième sur le panel Céline Awa, qui est le directeur, la directrice exécutive de International Institute for Legislative Affairs au Kenya. Et, et elle nous va partager aussi l'expérience du Kenya avec nous. Alors, sans plus tarder, je crois que euh, SMU, ATIM et ATCA ont décidé de faire ce séminaire en ligne qui vise à coordonner un peu nos, nos idées, à, à échanger sur l'ingérence de l'industrie du tabac en Afrique, surtout l'ingérence à travers les nouveaux produits du tabac. Et ce webinaire est spécifiquement ouvert pour les équipes de surveillance qui ont été établies dans les pays avec lesquels SMU, ATIM et ATCA euh, travaillent. Donc, euh, ce n'est pas un webinaire public, mais c'est un webinaire beaucoup plus fermé. Et ceci étant, je vais donc, euh, pour vous qui êtes déjà là, vous dire euh, merci pour avoir été au rendez-vous à, à l'heure. Nous n'allons plus tarder. Je crois que d'autres vont nous rejoindre dans les minutes qui suivent. Alors, euh, nous allons euh, laisser la parole à professeur euh, Lekan Ayeyoussouf qui va donner 
et le, la présentation générale sur ce que nous pouvons entendre par les nouveaux produits du tabac et l'ingérence de l'industrie du tabac en Afrique. Et les deux autres panélistes vont nous prendre dans des cas spécifiques selon l'expérience de leur pays. Merci, merci professeur. Et nous allons vous laisser la parole. So good morning, uh, colleagues. Um, I'll be presenting on the issue of uh, novel tobacco products and how it um, may be seen on the one hand as a harm reduction intervention, uh, but on the other hand, uh, as a means by which tobacco industry is trying to influence or interfere with tobacco control. Uh, globally and uh, particularly in, in the African region. So as um, previously introduced, maybe I must say, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it seems to me Leon's uh, introduced me as being in University of Pretoria. Yes, I worked at the University of Pretoria for about 12 years, but I have been working at Safako Mahatu Health Sciences University now for the last uh, seven years. So I'm the director of the Africa Tobacco, Africa Center for Tobacco Industry, Monitoring and Policy Research at Safako Makhatu L Sciences University. So I'm just going to quickly remind some of you who might not have seen this slide, I've used it many times. Uh, essentially, this is what PMI corporate strategic document. Uh, that was developed by PMI in 2014 and was uh, released as one of the secret documents uh, Ruta's uh, investigation unveiled. It says what they are aiming for. Um, and I think I just, among many other things, the one that is relevant for us today is one, uh, full political engagement. Uh, another one is media relations. Uh, when you go to the media relations, then they speak about ability to find the right spin, an ability to tell stories direct and indirectly and establish relationship with key reporters. You would understand when I talk later about what they call cell stories. E-cigarettes and e tobacco products is one of those stories they are trying to sell through the media relation and also using this argument of reducing the harm of tobacco, using that to engage the politicians who might feel or might not know that this is just a strategy. They're also using this e-cigarette and novel products to build a third party coalition, for example, scientists and researchers around the world are all fighting each other about the benefits of e-cigarettes or eated tobacco as opposed to the harm that they may cause. So in that way, they've been able to find what they call the think tanks and policy groups that are now indirectly affiliated to tobacco industry. On the one hand, they continue to sell cigarettes on the other hand, they're using this uh, harm reduction products to engage with media, politicians, and this third party movement. This is one also from their document, they talk about good news. I think this is also important for all the advocates. They call the advocates anti-tobacco organization. They said the ATOs, pivots have now moved towards the political, economic, and physical argument. And that suggests that they are on the right track with their government affairs, because those government affairs and fiscal affairs and communication strategies is all about the economic and the fiscal argument of tobacco control. That they have now gotten us to start talking about that more than the health issues. So it means their communication strategy, strategy is winning. They believe we would find it much harder as anti-tobacco organizations to fight on those profound questions of economics, law, 
intellectual property, agronomy, and constitutional rights. So what this says to us is that we need to get ourselves well prepared to be able to articulate ourselves with government when it talks to the economic and fiscal arguments. Then on the third one, they say on e-cigarettes and other reduced risk, we have got a great story to tell. You remember the earlier strategy when they engage media, they talk about their story to tell. So e-cigarettes has been a way to engage media and put themselves out as good guys. And they have been able to sow divisions within the anti-tobacco movement with this e-cigarette issue. And e-cigarette users are also more willing to fight back than the normal cigarette smokers. We saw that in South Africa um, during the lockdown. They are more organized, they're on digital platforms, they can easily cause a vote to happen. Uh, more than 600,000 of them were able to write. So we have to match those digital platforms as tobacco control movement. So they say the anti-tobacco con control organization play a weak defense. This is why it is important to have a seminar or a webinar like this to strengthen our, not defense, but our attack on this industry. Because when we play defense, we will always be weaker. So we, I'm hoping that I can take you through what e-cigarette is all about, or this reduced risk product, because apart from e-cigarettes, we now have what they call the eated tobacco products. So e-cigarettes, this is what it looks like. It looks like a cigarette, at least what we call the first generation of e-cigarettes. It will have a battery plugged to an atomizer. In that atomizer would be the solution, um, would be the eating elements, uh, and then the liquid uh, cartridge would be plugged to that eating element. So once the battery eats the element, it um, gets out the aerosol that comes out as a vape or as a vapor. It's just like when you boil water and the vapor comes through or you boil a kettle and you start seeing the vapor come through. But in that liquid, you've got nicotine and you've got uh, glycerin and other chemicals that we are still studying. So this is another description of what it looks like. In the atomizer itself, is a closer look at what the atomizer looked like. When the battery eats off a coil, in that atomizer is a coil, around the coil is what we call the wick. It's sort of, um, and outside that would be the liquid. The liquid wets that wick and the coil heats up the wick. Then that causes the smoke to come out into the mouth of the smoker. So there are different types of e-products, by the way. It's not only e-cigarettes, there's also e-ukas, uka pens. There's also e-cigars. They look like cigars, but they're also eaten up with an atomizer. There's e-pipes. They look just like that. And there's, of course, the e-ukas. As I said, um, they would not have the other, um, like your normal uka charcoal, which is eaten through burning the coal. This one is going to be eaten by this atomizer and the battery. And then you can still have the long um, stretch of the UCA. So you must also watch out for this product. And of course, now there are about 450 brands. In South Africa, we found about 240 different uh, vaping shops in South Africa. So it, this is a big business uh, in, in, in the continent. So let's quickly take a look at what the difference is between your traditional cigarettes your eated tobacco and the um, e-cigarette, which we call electronic nicotine delivery system. So your cigarette will obviously have nicotine. Uh, it has tobacco in it. Uh, it's got uh, burning, uh, which is combustion. Um, the temperature is very high and there's no electronic system. And that's exactly what it looks like, your normal cigarette. But when you look at eated tobacco products, they've got nicotine in them, they've got tobacco, but they don't burn. Um, and then it's it, the temperature is generally lower than that of traditional cigarettes. 
and uh, but it has an electronic system. It looks just like that. It's like a cell phone, a small little cell phone uh, that you then use the eater and you put a stick of cigarette into it um, and you smoke right from there. The um, electronic nicotine delivery system like e-cigarette has got nicotine, but sometimes it may contain no nicotine. Then we call it the electronic non-nicotine delivery system, which is the ENNDS. It does not have tobacco, so they say nicotine is mainly uh, coming from uh, synthesized. But we argue that this nicotine would definitely come from some tobacco somewhere before it got synthesized. But the argument industry I've used is that it's a synthesized nicotine and therefore it cannot be a tobacco product. Just like eated tobacco, it does not have any uh, combustion. There's no fire to it. As we all know, when you put fire, it causes more chemicals and ingredients come out. So these would have less chemicals than the traditional tobacco because it does not burn. But the temperature is also much lower than traditional tobacco and it has an electronic system. But there are different types of e-cigarette, starting from the ones that look like cigarettes when they first started, then it becomes this mid-size and now they become very big with a tank where we call it the open system. You can change the temperature yourself. The more higher the temperature, the more nicotine can come up that can come out of it if you need more nicotine. So that's why we call it open system. Now, when you change the temperature or you know, the, uh, the, the power of the battery, you will also get more chemicals apart from the more nicotine, more metals will be burning that you will go into your lungs. And this is why we say it is actually more dangerous with the open system than the closed system. So as I said earlier on, the tobacco comes from, the nicotine comes from tobacco and we believe it should be part of tobacco products. I said earlier on, they come in in different sizes. Now with the open system, the problem we also have now is that you can actually now pour a liquid of marijuana or dacha or um, I don't know, whatever you call it in the different areas that can, um, that can be smoked, not necessarily the nicotine liquid. Now, you probably know that there was a big problem last year where people were dying, smoking this THC, which is the, uh, a chemical derived from marijuana. I'm smoking into the lungs and they were dying of what they call this uh, e-cigarette -E vaping lung injury, e -vali. So the Surgeon General in the U.S. has says this is um, uh, it's a problem. Uh, it has a negative effect of slowing down the decrease in all forms of tobacco use. And that's the same thing in Africa. They want to slow down our efforts to decrease traditional tobacco use. They are marketing them as a, a, a smoking cessation product. You see them here next to uh, your normal and uh, uh, nicotine replacement therapy, which is Nicorette, they put them right there. So even a smoker who wants to normally buy Nicorette would then be attracted to go and buy these e-cigarettes. They're currently controlled, regulated under Medical uh, Medicines Control Act as a Schedule Three, but they went to court um, sometime about three or four years ago and they won the court case that these are not medicine, they are meant to be for leisure and uh, therefore they should not be regulated under medicine because they never advertise them as for smoking cessation. But the current law still says, you know, if the nicotine is more than six milligram, it gets regulated by Medicine Control Council, which means it can only be prescribed by a doctor and can only be available at the pharmacy. But anything less than six milligram is currently then unregulated and a consumer product. And this is where they've pitched it. The way they've also interfered with tobacco control in South Africa is that they've also asked for um, adjustment of the excise duty because the uh, government is currently looking at 
putting it as part of Tobacco Products Act and therefore it to be subject to uh, taxation. They've asked for this to contain, to, to not to be taxed or to be taxed because, uh, at the lower level because it is harm reducing product. We previously had advertisement on the road uh, on, as a billboard, but it was challenged by the advertising authority and they've now taken down this adverts. But they are currently available in different malls, uh, just like that, in different stores openly sold. And also you can buy them on internet. We've conducted the biggest study of e-cigarettes use in South Africa with about 18,000 respondents uh, on a survey. I wouldn't bore you with this, you can have this slide. I think the most important thing to know is that people tend to think it's safer than smoking, uh, that it can help them. Uh, you can see 51% of e-cigarette users think it can help to cut down smoking. Uh, they feel it's safer than smoking. It tastes better than the regular cigarettes um, and it's more socially acceptable. So with evidence like this, we are giving this to government. Uh, this paper is going to be published soon in the Tobacco Control Journal. The summary of the finding also is that um, 16 to 19 year old are mostly exposed to the advertisement of e-cigarettes. Uh, we found that after 12 months, in the less than 12 months, e-cigarettes seems to help smokers to stay um, uh, um, without their smoking. After 12 months, it actually reversed. Those who used e-cigarettes are more likely to be smoking than those who did not use e-cigarettes uh, to, to try to quit. So we do not have evidence in South Africa. That's the first study in Africa to show, and you are the first to see this. Uh, because it's only in the press in tobacco control. I will share it as soon as uh, it gets uh, published on online. So we have able to show with evidence that after 12 months, e-cigarette users are worse off in quitting than those who did not use. Only in the short term, they are better off. Also that 53% of them relapse um, after quitting after the length of time compared to uh, 38 percent of those who use counseling to try to quit. So all of this says we need to regulate e-cigarettes. The WHO's recommendation, uh, which you can find on the WHO website, is that we must prevent initiation of e-cigarettes. For those who have not banned e-cigarettes, that's the first prize is to ban it. But if it's not, if it has not been banned and is already in your market, then you must prevent initiation of this e-cigarette by non-smokers and children in particular, by restricting advertisement, promotion and sponsorship, and of course, restricting flavors that appeal to children. Also minimize the possible effect by regulating the products, as I said earlier on, regulating the uh, emissions and protecting public health policies from these e-cigarette producers and manufacturers. And then I'm going to quickly move to eated tobacco products, which is different from e-cigarette, as I said earlier on. These are no argument, they're clearly tobacco that are eated, and that's why they are called eated tobacco products. i course is the most common one, and I'm sure you might have it in your jurisdiction in your countries. It is produced by Philip Morris. The Glow is produced by um, uh, BAT and Plume also by BAT. So you have them in different uh, uh, um, flavors and they are packaged just like cigarette, but in a very smaller container. So you've got the regular, which is blue, mentor will be green and your purple mentor. And then you can see they're also with flowers to attract women. So again, the eater tobacco products are even worse than e-cigarette because it will remind smokers and they are not likely to give up their smoking again. They're just using this to market Marlboro. So the WHO group, again, this has not yet been published, but in our recent discussion, uh, the conclusion and recommendations uh, that I suggested was that uh, we need further evidence of the health impact of these eaten tobacco products. But until then, there is no evidence that they actually uh, minimize exposure or 
are safer than your other products, uh, traditional tobacco products. Therefore, they must be regulated like every other tobacco product using your regulatory mechanism that is uh, prescribed by the WHO Framework Convention for Tobacco Control. And then we need to obviously keep surveillance of all these products, whether it's e-cigarettes with nicotine or without nicotine, uh, whether it's eated tobacco products, all the advertisement, we need to report them. And you all have the app produced by 18 for you to report, not just only industry activities, but even these products, once you see them and how they're advertising them, please uh, just drop them on that uh, ATIM app for us or send an email uh, to um, the ATIM colleagues. Uh, thank you and I'm happy to take questions. I hope I was able to keep to the 20 minutes. Merci, cher professeur. Merci pour uh, cette brillante présentation. Nous avons euh, beaucoup appris et nous vous félicitons encore euh, une fois pour votre euh, étude qui est, est en cours et dont les résultats seront bientôt publiés. Je crois que de votre présentation, nous avons noté qu'il y a une euh, diversité de nouveaux produits, du tabac et... Il y en a qui contiennent de nicotine, il y en a qui n'en contiennent pas, il y en a qui sont du tabac, qui contiennent du tabac et qui est chauffé par un dispositif électronique. Et nous voyons que les études continuent pour montrer, prouver les effets de ces produits sur la santé mais aussi l'effort en Afrique du Sud que vous, donc, que vous avez partagé avec nous est assez louable que vous êtes en train de parvenir à voir la pratique d'intégration de ces produits dans la communauté et puis rassembler les données pour pouvoir convaincre le législateur à ce que ces produits soient bien légiférés. Et vraiment, c'est bien. Vous nous avez aussi appelé à continuer à surveiller les tactiques de l'industrie liées à ces produits, surtout la promotion, la publicité et toute autre tactique qu'ils utilisent, parce que, évidemment, les produits continuent toujours d'être un risque, tel que l'OMS l'a révélé. Et comme vous, vous avez rappelé aussi, donc, que nous devrons chercher à rester éveillé et partager les informations, collecter les données, faire des rapports sur ce que nous constatons. Vraiment, merci pour avoir ouvert nos idées davantage sur ces produits et leur progression et l'expérience que vous faites en Afrique du Sud. Nous allons recevoir la deuxième présentation qui est un cas euh, spécifique de la Côte d'Ivoire. En Côte d'Ivoire, euh, l'équipe de surveillance a euh, eu l'opportunité de faire euh, des études sur euh, les nouveaux produits du tabac et a fait des constats. Les résultats de ces études, il euh, nous avons le docteur Boli, Francis Boli, qui est ici, qui va les partager avec nous. Il va nous conduire un peu plus davantage dans les détails liés à, cette, à ces études. Entre-temps, je voudrais rappeler à chacun, si vous avez des questions, que vous voudriez bien les poser dans la section de questions-réponses. Nous allons prendre les questions dans cette session qui est réservée aux questions et aux réponses. Euh, Docteur Boli, euh, nous allons vous laisser pour votre présentation. Oh oui. Euh, nous vous prions d'être assez bref pour euh, pouvoir laisser la place aussi aux questions. Je crois que les gens ont beaucoup de questions pour, pour vous. D'accord. Merci. Allez. 
Merci, cher Chessou. Alors, le contexte de l'étude que nous avons menée est que dans le monde, comme partout, en Côte, partout au monde, comme en Côte d'Ivoire, la hausse de la prévalence au tabagisme reste substantielle et incessante. Parmi les nombreux facteurs, il y a la nicotine qui constitue un élément capteur pour le fumeur. Eu égard donc au pouvoir addictif du tabac, la recherche de stratégies de réduction de cette prévalence est donc engagée. C'est cela qui a suscité l'invention de nouveaux produits de substitution dont le rapport bénéfice et risque serait jugé favorable. Parmi ceux-ci, on note les e-cigarettes, donc les cigarettes électroniques, et bien d'autres produits de nouvelles technologies. Toutefois, le constat que nous faisons, c'est qu'il y a une tendance de rachat de fabricants d'e-cigarettes de et de produits de nouvelles technologies par des multinationales du tabac. En Côte d'Ivoire, malheureusement, nous observons une flambée de ces produits adulés par les jeunes. Cela, donc, pour nous, rentre dans le cadre de l'ingérence de l'industrie du tabac. Et dans ce cas, il est donc normal que lui soit appliqué ce que nous appelons le principe de la surveillance. Alors, pour nous, en Côte d'Ivoire, la Surveillance signifie que pour mieux combattre son adversaire, il faut bien le connaître. Nous avons travaillé sur une méthodologie, à partir d'une méthodologie et trois communes donc ont été choisies pour euh, cette étude, dans les communes de Yopougon, Cocody et Abobo. Sur ces trois communes, nous avons essayé de travailler sur 47 lieux de distribution des nouveaux produits du tabac. Sur ces 47, il y a 25 à Bobo, 12 à Yopougon et 10 à Cocody. Il y a plusieurs choix, euh, bon, plusieurs raisons qui ont milité euh, vers ce choix, notamment l'habitat, l'importance euh, d'habitants, euh, la grandeur et la densité de la population, le flux migratoire. Et au niveau des participants, nous avons interrogé surtout les responsables ou les gérants des points de vente de ces nouveaux produits. Comme euh, aussi participants, nous avons les, équipe, notre équipe, équipe team, qui donc euh, des personnes qui travaillent déjà dans des structures de lutte anti-tabac et donc qui étaient les différents enquêteurs. Alors, l'entretien et l'observation ont été les deux techniques qui ont été utilisées. Et ces techniques ont eu les Résultats qui sont les suivants. Le premier résultat porte sur la nature des lieux de vente. Au total, nous avons identifié 23 types de lieux de vente de ces nouveaux produits. Ce sont ces différents sites que, ces différents sites que vous voyez là. Mais pour une question de synthèse et surtout de récurrence de ces produits, nous en avons retenu 6 diapos. Nous en avons retenu six qui sont les glaciers, les restaurants, les bars, les supermarchés, les salons de thé et les boîtes de nuit. Alors, au-delà de ces résultats, nous avons les types de produits qui constituent le second, les types de produits qui sont vendus. Au niveau des types de produits qui sont vendus, nous avons retenu deux items qui nous sont importants. Nous parlons ici de polycommerce. Alors, le polycommerce ici pour nous, c'est la combinaison de plusieurs types de produits au même point de vente. Et là, vous voyez là, à gauche de notre tableau, il y a les différents produits, les types de produits et le pourcentage des produits qui, que nous retrouvons sur les différents points de vente. Le second point que nous retenons à partir de des types de produits vendus, c'est que nous avons constaté une prédominance des produits de nouvelles technologies, parmi bien entendu la combinaison de tous ces produits. Alors, vous voyez là, avec ce graphique qui sort là, voilà, avec ce graphique, vous voyez là, 
que la vente du chicha, de là où le chicha est vraiment euh, significatif, il y a les e-cigarettes, les, e les cigarettes ordinaires, et donc euh, nous avons donc jugé utile de travailler sur les nouveaux produits, de mettre un focus sur les nouveaux produits. Parce que nous avons vu que leur vente était beaucoup plus euh, retenu. Alors, le troisième résultat porte donc sur les spécificités de ces nouveaux produits. À ce niveau, nous avons retenu deux types de nouveaux produits au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire, bien entendu. La cigarette électronique et les narguilés que nous appelons chicha, un peu plus derrière. En ce qui concerne les spécificités concernant les cigarettes électroniques, il faut dire qu'il y a une panoplie de, de cigarettes électroniques qui, non seulement au niveau de la forme, tout à l'heure, le professeur Lecan euh, avait parlé des marques, donc 450 marques de cigarettes électroniques, mais ici, nous avons plutôt mis l'accent sur les, les ingrédients qui sont utilisés pour servir euh, la, les cigarettes électroniques. À ce niveau, vous avez là les cigarettes électroniques avec du liquide. Les cigarettes électroniques, gris et vraiment une panoplie de spécificités au niveau des cigarettes électroniques. Les spécificités au niveau de la chicha, divers parfums qui sont vendus. Vous allez voir en fonction des demandes de chicha, kiwi, plus parfum raisin, ananas et autres. Vous avez les chichas grenades avec des cartouches. Vous avez les chichas narguilés bleu blanc. Les chichas électroniques avec un parfum sans nicotine. Distil. Chicha kiwi, citron, ananas. Chicha pastèque et ainsi de suite. de ces produits, nous avons constaté. Diapo. Nous avons constaté la ressemblance de, produits, de ces deux produits par leurs composantes. Il faut dire que, diapo, au niveau de la composition, comme je le disais, nous avons constaté la ressemblance des deux produits par leur composition, donc leurs composantes. Ce que nous retenons, c'est qu'il y a un appareil et les accessoires. La composante de la e-cigarette, là, que vous voyez très bien, il y a plusieurs composantes, le professeur Lécan avait déjà montré. Et à la droite, Gapo, vous avez donc, voilà, quand c'est monté, voilà comment ça se présente. Mais ce que vous devez comprendre ici, c'est que nous avons une dissociation, l'appareil et les composantes. Au niveau de la chicha, donc la composante au niveau, vous avez là l'image de façon composée de la chicha, le diapo, à gauche, et là, quand voilà, ce produit est monté, voilà à quoi est-ce que euh, ça pourrait ressembler. Je crois que le professeur Lecan a fait un clin d'œil là-dessus déjà. Alors, le, là, nous passons maintenant au prochain résultat, donc les modes d'approvisionnement de ces nouveaux produits. Nous avons à ce niveau mis l'accent sur les points d'approvisionnement. Alors, les, au niveau des points d'approvisionnement, il faut dire que nous avons les sources qui sont physiques et les sources virtuelles. Alors, la source virtuelle ici, c'est effectivement les boutiques en ligne. En Côte d'Ivoire, c'est généralement à travers Jumia et autres euh, boutiques que nous avons donc euh, le ravitaillement de ces produits. Et il y a des sites physiques, donc qui sont les Shisha Shop, qu'on peut trouver en zone 4. C'est un quartier d'Abidjan ici, à Makori exactement. 
Et il y a aussi à Yopougon, c'est différent des représentations qui sont à Yopougon. Il y a les grandes surfaces commerciales ou les supermarchés, ce côté Capsule, ce sont des, des marques de, 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 de supermarchés qui sont là, que vous voyez, ce côté Capsule, Cosmos et Bon Prix. Les caractéristiques des points de distribution. Il y a l'approvisionnement et il y a la distribution donc en détail. Le constat que nous avons fait, c'est qu'il y a une libéralisation exagérée de la commercialisation de la chicha, surtout et commercialisation exagérée et anarchique, on va dire. On a aussi la vente et la consommation intégrée dans les prestations des financiers de bas et bois de nuit. Alors, là-bas, il y a maintenant, dans les bois, bas et les bois de nuit, des espaces qui sont aménagés pour que les clients puissent aussi avoir accès à la consommation des e-cigarettes et de la chicha au sein même de, de, de ces bois de nuit. On a aussi contacté la vente d'accessoires à droite, comment vous voyez là, comment vous voyez, comment est-ce que cela est exposé. Et il y a aussi la vente sournoise de cigarettes électroniques que, dans des lieux que nous avons appelés les lieux de vapotage. Diapo. Alors, l'autre résultat a apporté donc sur les prix pratiqués sur ces, ces nouveaux produits. Au niveau des cigarettes électroniques, comme je l'avais indiqué, c'est justement pour ça que j'avais essayé de détacher de travailler sur un peu la compos les différentes composantes. Il faut comprendre qu'il y a d'abord le coût de l'appareil de Chicha qui varie entre 12 000 et 45 000. Maintenant, il faut les parfums et les autres accessoires. Et donc, au niveau des parfums, le paquet, donc la cartouche est vendue à 10 000 francs. La, la cartouche qui contient 10 petit paquet que le vendeur peut vendre aussi en détail, donc 2000 francs le paquet. Au niveau de, de l'argilé, justement, c'est aussi pratiquement le même, la même planche de, de coût, donc de 12 000 à 45 000 francs. Et les parfums aussi sont vendus à 10 000 francs la cartouche. Ça, c'est au niveau de l'argilé. L'autre résultat apporté donc sur la tranche d'âge, la tranche d'âge des clients. Nous avons identifié trois tranches d'âge, les plus de 18 ans, qui étaient à 85 85%, les 11 à 17 ans, qui sont de 12 à de 12, euh, 13%, et les moins de 10 ans. Donc, qui sont de 11 ans, si vous voulez, qui sont de euh, 2%. Alors, ce que nous devons retenir ici, c'est que la proportion des clients qui ont de moins de 18 ans sont, monte jusqu'à 15%. Docteur Bolli, moi, je... oui. nous vous prions d'accélérer, de, 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 il vous reste deux minutes. Oui. Et donc, vous voyez là, juste à côté, la tranche d'âge, là, les images qui sont juste à côté. Les, nous avons constaté des faits marquants, notamment la présence de la vente de la jante féminine dans la consommation du chicha, commentez-moi une image, la consommation très marquée des adolescents et la non-considération des nouveaux produits comme des produits de tabac par les clients et même les vendeurs. Nous avons mené à ce titre plusieurs actions, notamment en termes de riposte, parce que nous sommes dans la surveillance, il faut aussi la riposte pour que la surveillance soit complète. Donc nous avons mené des activités, notamment des conférences de presse, pour interpeller les autorités sur le phénomène et surtout pour dénoncer les conditions de vente et de consommation de ces produits qui sont vendus sans licence et et sur lesquels il n'y a pas de traçabilité, puisque ce sont des produits de tabac dans notre loi. La conception, nous avons conçu euh, des brochures sur la base des études que nous avons menées, 
Et ces brochures sont distribuées à tout moment lors de nos visites de plaidoyer aux autorités et à toute personne qui nous reçoit. Vous avez là la première couverture de ces deux brochures qui ont été élaborées avec l'aide de notre partenaire ATCA et ATPF. Alors, si vous allez là-bas, vous allez leur dire que si vous consommez la chicha ou le narguilé, la pipe à peau, le parfum sucré, croyez et sachez que vous êtes en train de fumer de la cigarette, donc c'est du tabac. Nous disons stop à la consommation du tabac et c'est sur ce mot que je voulais vous dire merci. Et surtout merci à professeur Lekan et SMU qui nous ont renforcé lors de la formation à Pretoria. Et voici les résultats que nous faisons, la vulgarisation du travail que nous faisons à travers cette formation. Toutes mes félicitations. Et et félicitations à l'équipe de, de la Côte d'Ivoire qui a vraiment pris ce sujet à cœur, le sujet de la prolifération de ces produits. Nous avons compris que sur le marché de la Côte d'Ivoire, déjà les produits électroniques tels que le professeur Lecal nous a présenté, et ces produits sont sur le marché ivoirien. Et votre étude a aussi montré qu'il n'y a pas que les produits électroniques, mais il y a aussi les narguilés et puis qui sont vraiment en hausse de consommation. Nous allons prendre Madame Céline Awa de ILA qui va nous présenter l'expérience que l'équipe de surveillance de, du Kenya a vécue récemment concernant les nouveaux produits du tabac et l'ingérence de l'industrie du tabac au Kenya. Euh, Céline, j'espère que vous êtes prête pour partager votre expérience avec nous. Nous allons donc vous laisser la parole. Merci. Okay, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, good morning. Um, thank you very much for having me here. My name is Celine Awor. I'm going to um, share briefly on um, the experience we, we've had and we're having in Kenya when it comes to new technology products. I'd like to thank the ATCA team for uh, bringing us together in this webinar and also the previous speakers, uh, SMU team, Prof. Lekan, uh, ACBF, and all the other partners that we are working on in this uh, project. So I have a few slides that I want to share. I'll be sharing about uh, just briefly what I think about these new technology products and uh, the response we've had from CSOs to monitor and counter, the outcomes of these response activities, as well as the challenges you experienced, and then a few recommendations for us to think through. So um, just looking at um, what these so-called emerging or novel products that we have uh, in the market, there are quite many, and I really enjoyed uh, Prof's presentations that he was very thorough on e-cigarettes. Um, when I look at these projects generally, these products, they have some common features in terms of what they are offering uh, to, you know, their consumers. For instance, they have, you know, uh, they really emphasize on key features such as giving, you know, um, scent or aroma that traditionally in the, you know, conventional tobacco products like cigarettes uh, would be an issue and also using flavors and especially for nicotine pouches as we've seen that this is very important for purposes of making it palatable because i understand nicotine uh, uh, as a product in its own is quite uh, it's not uh, palatable so also riding on the reduced harm narrative and also in terms of how they are marketed uh, to promote convenience and access and in most cases they target young people in terms of how they are used and accessed. And, you know, they are quite innovative and go beyond the common um, regulatory boundaries we have. Therefore, you know, always presenting challenges. And this is, is a key area that the industry um, 
is exploiting, you know, looking at loopholes or gaps or weaknesses in the policies to challenge, um, you know, any uh, restrictions or, you know, when people try to challenge these products, then they take, make, make use of, take use of those uh, gaps that we have in our policies. And in most cases, because of the innovation, uh, policies, at least from what I've seen in Kenya, we kind of are uh, playing catch up because they are ahead in a way of, of what our policies uh, have in place. And uh, as I mentioned, they are quite a wide variety. I, I have learned a lot today about e-cigarettes that I, I didn't know, I thought I knew. So I guess, and they're quite other many, and it's, it's good that when these products come up, when we have this kind of information, then we understand, especially since they are not necessarily new, they could be new in, in our jurisdiction, but they've been there probably in other places. So uh, the case that I want to share for us in Kenya is uh, uh, the new product that we've had for the past two years or so, that is a nicotine pouch marketed by BAT under the brand Lift, and it's Lift with a, with a Y. Uh, somebody emphasized that a, a while back, and I just thought I should say that so that uh, it's differentiated from, I think there's a, a cab hire company goes going by a similar name of Lyft. So this is how uh, the product looks like, at least what we have in the country. So BAT um, indicates that this product is manufactured by their sister company in Sweden, the one that is in the market right now. So there are two uh, variants in terms of flavor. The yellow one is called a tropic breeze and the blue one is berry frost. And if you can see, they both have uh, dots on, this would be on my right. Uh, so those indicate the strength. So uh, the higher the number of dots, then the stronger it is, the lower the number of dots, then uh, the weaker it is. Then uh, the, the pictures below show how it is. So the, the, the upper ones, they come in kind of like a sachet, like a, a sachet that uh, it's torn off. Then there's the lower one that comes in like a small round container. When you open, then you get those white small pouches that look like tea bags. And uh, it's, an, it's an oral pouch. So it is placed um, under the lip and the nicotine is absorbed through the gum. And this is not necessarily a new technology. I think even in Kenya, we've had uh, some tobacco products that have been marketed for many years that are consumed in this uh, type of manner. And uh, this particular one has been in the country since July 2019, and it really you know, kicked off very fast with young people. At the moment, it is registered and licensed under the Pharmacy and Poisons Board. That is a, a, a government regulatory agency under the Ministry of Health that uh, licenses and uh, regulates pharmaceutical products and poisonous products that are, you know, marketed under certain control. So that is uh, the agency through which Lyft is licensed and registered under. And um, BAT has been, you know, indicated that they are constructing a manufacturing plant in Kenya to produce uh, the lift locally. As I mentioned, the ones that have been the market have been uh, are imports from Sweden, but now they want to manufacture it locally and also be able to export to the regional market. Remember BAT Kenya is a, a regional hub, even for their traditional tobacco products that they manufacture here and export in the uh, larger East and Central African countries. So that is how uh, the product looks like. So uh, just briefly talking about industry tactics in promoting the use of this product. First of all, uh, BAT has been riding so much on this uh, harm reduced or you know less harmful narrative, which um, they perpetuate in all their, whenever they talk about lift, what they emphasize is that it is less, less harmful. They have a website that is called Lift Republic. That is that will be the photo to the end, the one that I've just sorry have moved forward. Uh, this will be on my right. So when you go to that website, of course they trying to show that they 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 control the product. Uh, one is required to confirm that you are over eighteen by just entering numbers. Uh, date of birth, which can be uh, fictitious, 
but then once somebody gets onto the website, then it has information about, uh, about the product, uh, how to use it, and even location. So when you click on the location, it, it actually uh, provides information on where to, uh, to the nearest stores around you, find a store where to get and, and with maps, you know, uh, map indicating the stores where somebody can get the product. And even about the product and about nicotine, there, there isn't, you know, really full information in terms of uh, the health impacts of lift of, of this product, but just emphasizing uh, its less harmful nature, according to them, that it is not a tobacco product, therefore it is not harmful, uh, it is not carcinogenic, that is the information they have on their website about uh, LIFT. And um, LIFT has been um, very much highly marketed and available and accessible online. Uh, in, in addition to the physical uh, stores. Uh, you can see I have a photo of uh, ni uh, lift nicotine pouches available on Jumia. That will be the photo on my extreme left. So here we see, uh, by the time I took this photo, this is what was appearing on the app. We will see further as we continue what is now av available or appearing in this same uh, online ma um, uh, marketing app. Uh, Jumia. So that time they were even, they were having offers, uh, discounts, uh, in, depending on how much um, somebody purchases, both flavors and with different strengths. And also the next photo also is of a, an, an, another online shop that sells uh, alcohol products, it sells even cigarettes. Actually at that time, if you searched lift or the nicotine pouch, it do that and also uh, suggests uh, other products you might be interested in or similar products that uh, previous uh, by previous visited visitors had also accessed uh, previous visitor visitors who were interested in lift other products that you are also interested in and all of them are cigarettes and that is illegal. It's a violation of our law and they were also delivery to where you are. At least for cigarettes, it's very clear. Our beats um, courier or, you know, mailing uh, cigarettes uh, to a customer, you know, uh, as these sites were offering. So um, in terms of restricting access, as I mentioned for these online platforms, all of them, all they needed you to do is to click uh, uh, um, an icon that indicates that you confirming that you are an adult, that you are above 18 and voila, you get access and you're able to order to purchase and it's delivered once you pay. So um, in terms of industry interference uh, with this particular issue, sometimes a few months ago in September, uh, BAT announced that they were in talks with uh, government agencies requesting for or negotiating a tax holiday for about two to three years to enable them um, put up that plant that they were working on so that eventually the tax that the product will attract will be reduced, will be lower. And because this plant and these uh, uh, products are going to bring in um, direct uh, is an investment that is going to uh, that is going to bring in term, that is going to bring a big uh, foreign direct investment to the country because the products will be sold locally and also exported and because they believe that the pouches are less harmful than cigarettes then they deserve to be taxed less and um, I think yeah, it, is, it is clear that uh, they, they are interfering based on the tactic that they, they've, they've used and they always use, you know, exaggerating the economic importance of, of the company. And this, I think, was um, very timely at, uh, and, uh, you know, very timely for them and, you know, play, uh, give them an upper hand considering the current economic status of the country 
that most all countries in the world are experiencing as a result of COVID, that you know the country is and the government is really keen on looking for opportunities and mechanisms of uh, strengthening the economy, especially um, the manufacturing sector, also being part of the big four agenda that uh, our current president launched for his legacy. And so this idea of that, you know, this plant, once it is established here, it's going to uh, bring in uh, income, it's going to, uh, you know, provide jobs. And they also uh, insist that they are also trying to kind of recover from the losses that they are experiencing from the um, production of, of cigarettes, which they blame on uh, higher, high and irrational tax policies that also, according to them, increase trade in illicit or tax, they call them tax evaded cigarettes. So this is in their mind, it is part of their strategy to diversify and to remain relevant and to ensure that their bottom line is, 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 is protected. And even looking at, at the you know, interference in terms of the law that we have, our policies and Kenya having ratified the FCTC, and Article 5.3 um, and, and, and the implementing guidelines are very clear in terms of prohibiting or um, advising or calling upon states not to grant tax exemptions to the industry to establish their businesses or to you know, run uh, their businesses. And the same is domesticated in our national laws, our Tobacco Control Act of 2007 and the Tobacco Control Regulations 2014, which uh, require that public, which uh, prohibits any public authority from granting incentives or privileges of any kind or any other preferential treatment to the tobacco industry to establish or run their businesses. And also uh, requiring that any public authority while implementing any investment or tax laws and any other policies that are related to tobacco will be guided by the priority to tackle the adverse uh, health and social and economic, all those, you know, health, social, economic, and environmental impacts of tobacco. So it means that even if the agenda for them is they're looking at investment and tax, but when it is related to policies around tobacco, then the health and you know, socioeconomic and environmental issues become a priority. And so this request by BAT uh, being granted would actually go against uh, the laws that we have. So how did CSOs respond? So um, CSOs in Kenya, uh, guided and you know, led by uh, Ketka Aile and now the, the team team, uh, and both are members of the team team and the media. Uh, the media have also been very supportive when we've been uh, doing this response. So what we, we've been doing is monitoring the media to see uh, what's happening. And BAT is quite good with, uh, I think they have very good media relations and um, especially with <laughs> Business Daily. I think uh, most of the time when they are announcing something because it's, it's a newspaper that also uh, focuses on business related stories and issues, they always have something to say and of late it's always been just about lift. So as CSOs, uh, we do um, vigilant media monitoring. We came together to put up a joint and coordinated uh, response, uh, guided by ATCA, giving us technical assistance and support in the process. So we came up with a communication campaign that had a number of activities that uh, we agreed that we'll take together jointly as the CS was working on this, including a press briefing that was coordinated and, and uh, posted by Ketka. Then we had a series of petition letters written targeting the various government agencies that are involved in this. So this issue had uh, different angles. Number one, the, the health angle and the legality in terms of its reg reg registration of the product, because as, as it is, it, the, 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 what they are trying to 
to, to tell the public is that this product is safe. That's why it is registered under the uh, Pharmacies and Poisons Board, yet it is not a nicotine replacement therapy. Uh, it, is, it is a product that is for, for leisure, you know, and then, and therefore it, it does not qualify to be regulated uh, under that manner. Then we also had, and we still have um, consistent social uh, media advocacy, including mainstream media, newspaper articles, and as I mentioned, petition letters uh, written to Ministry of Health, uh, Tobacco Control Board, uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, National Treasury, Ministry of Trade, all these key government agencies that have a role to play in one way or the other on the issue of this product, whether be it in terms of its registration or in terms of the discussions around tax exemption. So we, we had to really understand the issue well and tweak out, bring out all the issues uh, pertaining to this product, as I mentioned, looking at all the angles. So uh, part of the um, activities that uh, we've been doing and the results, as you can see here, the press briefing by Ketka, uh, and also other tobacco control CSOs in the country. I think like NTA, which is, I don't think they are in this call, but- Céline, yes, uh, yes. il reste trois minutes pour finir votre présentation. Merci. Thank you. Okay, so um, this is just part of the response that we had, a number of um, newspaper articles and social media uh, posts to pass the message that uh, what the, uh, the discussions between BAT and government were illegal and they should not be granted that tax holiday. So the outcome is that uh, Ministry of Health took action by questioning the registration of LIFT. And this was covered extensively in media. And also uh, we got some also response from the other government agencies that we wrote out to also just stating that this process of maybe giving tax exemptions follows uh, the constitution and the laws that we have. And therefore it is not an issue that can just be granted just like that. So it, it has not ended yet, you're still following up. The outcome as if you can recall, I, I initially showed the photos of the online uh, shops where nic nicotine was, uh, the nicotine pouch was available. Right now, if you check uh, on my extreme right, you see Jumia. If you try to search, it is no longer found. All the other websites, if you search, they tell you it is out of stock. I want to believe that this is because uh, the registration has been questioned. So now these products uh, are no longer available, at least from uh, what I've seen even uh, just this morning. So the challenges we've had, first of all, is uh, um, lack of information accurate data on this. And I think it is important that uh, we get evidence in so that, you know, the industry does not question uh, the information uh, that uh, we provide. So it's always good to have uh, evidence to support our advocacy. And also the fact that the product is registered as a, 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 a harm reduction, not really harm reduction, but is registered as a, a cessation product so that makes it uh, also challenging uh, because they are really pushing that agenda of, you know, it supporting smokers to quit. And also the fact that it, it's very easily accessible and available and, and open uh, to anyone to access, whether online or offline. And um, also the fact that it is still a bit uh, not clear where it fits exactly in our regulation. I think that is something that the industry is really taking advantage of. Yeah, that uh, uh, they insist that the nicotine is not from tobacco. So it, it is not covered under our tobacco control regulations. And also very high and intense lobbying by the industry and the harm reduction proponents. These are some of the articles that uh, were written by the harm reduction proponents on this product and, and others. And they even had uh, a workshop I think uh, a month ago or so. So some of the recommendations that we get from here is that uh, we need to have effective implementation of at least the existing policies we have, because even with what we have, we have very clear uh, guidelines in terms of government and industry interactions and relations, and that would have even address some of, address even this request by the industry requesting for a tax holiday. So uh, also need to, create awareness amongst all concerned government agencies, 
because it, it does not make sense that uh, the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, which is an agency under the Ministry of Health, went ahead and registered this uh, product as a cessation product, yet they, are, they have a key role to play in tobacco control. So it shows that uh, all the stakeholders who are involved in this process are not aware of their roles and their obligations under the FCTC and our tobacco control regulations. And also having a strong multi-sectoral coordination mechanism is important as we have in our team team, where we have representations from CSO, from government, media, uh, both uh, national and, and uh, subnational representation. And also uh, uh, having evidence-based response and action is important. And of course, the critical role that is played by CSOs and media in industry monitoring in the process. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Merci. Merci Céline pour cette brillante présentation de ce qui s'est passé ou ce qui se passe actuellement au Kenya. Vous nous avez montré comment un, un produit qui n'est pas comme ce que nous avons l'habitude de connaître. Ce n'est pas de la cigarette fumée, mais qui reste des produits du tabac en sachet. Et comment cela est en train d'être, de créer un, un souci au niveau du, de la législation et le contrôle au niveau du Kenya. Nous avons quelques questions déjà qui sont posées. Nous allons les prendre. Et nous avons donc euh, l'opportunité d'ouvrir euh, maintenant euh, le panel pour euh, ces questions. Et je vais donc demander à professeur Lekan euh, qu'il y a une préoccupation qui concerne la situation en, en Afrique du Sud et qui et vient dire que nous savons que l'Afrique du Sud est en phase dans ce processus d'adoption d'une nouvelle loi anti-tabac et cette loi qui intègre la réglementation des nouveaux produits. Et donc la question est surtout de savoir, vu le poids que l'Afrique du Sud constitue dans la région. L'intervenant souhaite savoir quelle est l'opinion publique, quelle est, comment l'opinion publique voit ces nouveaux produits et leur réglementation. Je vais laisser le professeur réagir. Allô, professeur Lekan. Thank you. Merci. So the public opinion, <clears throat> we also have uh, done a survey. Uh, the majority of public believe uh, that um, the uh, e-cigarettes should be regulated. Uh, we've actually had two, two, two surveys, about 58% of the population feel e-cigarettes should be regulated. Um, I think what is important to note is that um, a lot of people do not, they do not know if it should be regulated or not. And that is the work of the CSO to make sure that the awareness um, is actually um, increased on the uh, potential harm that this may cause. As I said earlier on, Unlike cigarette smokers, uh, e-cigarette users and this old modern technology um, users uh, tend to also have access to social media. So they are more active. And uh, as the industry says, they, they're fighting back on behalf of the industry does not even have to do much more. So we need to uh, be more active on the social media, given that that is the platform these electronic products are often being sold. Um, and the population which they are targeting are the young ones. So therefore our um, intervention, uh, raising awareness and the public health uh, effect must be targeted at uh, young um, population. I see the same situation in, in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, therefore we need to uh, begin to speak more 
Um, and I'm happy that uh, Dr. Boli has designed a poster uh, to increase um, awareness. But we need to be much more intentional to create something that will attract young people uh, in a very social media. Uh, there was one that was posted recently on the uh, ATCA group, which I found very appropriate uh, in making sure we call the attention of these young people. So uh, to, to summarize, the majority do feel it should be regulated. Uh, like I said, just under 60%, but there is about 40, 30% of people who do not know whether it should be regulated or not. So they are these people we need to target because they get confused by the industry. Merci. Merci, prof. Et merci pour l'interpellation, surtout de la société civile qui doit s'engager beaucoup plus dans la sensibilisation pour récupérer ce public qui ignore encore pour le moment ce qui tourne autour de ces produits. Et, et, professeur Lekan, il y a une préoccupation. Un participant souhaiterait que vous puissiez revenir sur... Euh, la différence entre la cigarette traditionnelle et la cigarette électronique. Je me rappelle, vous avez un tableau que vous aviez affiché et il souhaiterait que vous reveniez légèrement sur ça. Et puis, vous pouvez aussi aborder la préoccupation qui concerne la, 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 la nicotine synthétisée aujourd'hui. Nous, nous participants souhaiteraient savoir euh, qu'est-ce que euh, qu'est-ce qu'il en est euh, de cette nicotine synthétique so, qui est en train d'être yes, the, the, the traditional... yes prof merci yeah thank you so the 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 traditional cigarette has nicotine like the e-cigarette now the difference, generally the e-cigarettes, nicotine is less than that of the traditional cigarette. Even um, it does not, even if you des describe it as having in, on, the, on, the, on the cover, uh, that's one thing I did not mention, that sometimes they will say it does not contain nicotine, but when you measure the liquid, it will have nicotine in it or they will tell you it's got uh, six gram of nicotine, but when you measure it, it's, on, it's gonna be 10 gram of nicotine. But in general, the nicotine in e-cigarettes is lower than the nicotine in, in, in cigarettes, uh, uh, main cigarettes. And this is why sometimes they have to produce this open system where you can eat up the liquid even higher temperature. And the meaning of this is that the e-cigarette is not likely to be able to replace the nicotine you get from your traditional cigarette. Therefore, you are not likely to keep uh, cessation for a long time. After a while, you are going to crave for your normal cigarette. If they're going to produce it in the open system to give you the same nicotine, you're going to get more danger uh, from the other chemicals that's going to increase, like the heavy metals that is going to come from the coil. But generally speaking, nicotine itself is not safe. It is addictive. But what the industry also do not say is that apart from being addictive, nicotine also has a cardiovascular effect that increases your risk, particularly if you already have um, high blood pressure, increases your risk for, uh, for um, cardiovascular event like stroke and a heart attack. Nicotine itself, because it does constricts your, it narrows your blood vessels to make it smaller. And therefore your eye blood pressure might just got worse than if you take more nicotine. So it is not safe as it were. On the other hand, the difference is traditional cigarette, you would have to use uh, fire to burn the tobacco. So when you burn the tobacco, you produce even more chemicals. For example, when you burn sugar, you will produce aldehydes, which will cause cancer. In the e-cigarette, you don't burn the tobacco, you heat up the tobacco, so you do not create these additional chemicals. So indeed, the exposure to these toxicants in e-cigarette is lower, much lower than in traditional cigarette. 
But what we say is that we do not know whether this lower exposure is enough to remove any cancer risk until the next 10, 20 years. Now, for example, if cancer risk, you need five gram of this chemical. In cigarette, you already have something like a thousand gram. So in e-cigarette, if you reduce it from a thousand to hundred gram, does it mean you are not going to get cancer? Because all you need is that five gram. So cigarette is so dangerous that comparing anything with cigarette is actually going to be less exposure, but does not mean less risk. There's a difference between less exposure to a chemical and less health risk. And this is the, what we need to make industry understand. You're telling us less exposure, but you need to show us that the people are not going to get the disease. And that takes time to show us. Until then, we need to regulate e-cigarettes. Merci, merci, Prof. Céline, un participant souhaiterait savoir s'il y a d'autres nouveaux produits du tabac qui sont sur le marché Kenya, à côté de produits dont vous nous avez parlé ce matin, qui est le sachet de Lyft. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres produits de, qui sont des nouveaux produits du tabac sur le marché? Um, I think, um, of, of course, Lyft at the moment is, uh, is, is very popular because uh, uh, of, you know, how it's been marketed and uh, uh, it's a target being the youth, but that's not the only new product we have in the country. For one, BAT, BAT itself has um, a wide range of products that they call, um, uh, let me just get the word, they call them, uh, they have a portfolio of new categories, including uh, vapor products such as the e-cigarettes, which actually have been available in Kenya for, for a long time. They have uh, tobacco heating products and also a wide variety of modern oral products, including uh, lift. So apart from lift, there are those other um, traditional oral products like snuff and snuff. So lift is not the only one. I think lift has become popular because of of how BAT has marketed it together with uh, their uh, aliases and how it has really kicked off with the youth. And I don't suppose that this is going to be the last one. So. Uh, these products will come because remember these industries are the same that are operating in the other countries uh, in the Western world. So as the industry is innovative and um, generating products in other markets, then we also foresee that they will find their way in Kenya. Thank you. Merci. Merci Céline. Je crois que Certainement, comme le professeur Lekan nous l'a montré, qu'il y a déjà des boutiques qui sont un peu partout. Il y en a certainement au Kenya qui vendent aussi des, des cigarettes électroniques, comme nous avons déjà dans certains pays. Alors, Dr. Boli, un participant souhaiterait savoir si la chicha, vous nous avez montré vraiment que c'est en prolifération et le, les points d'accès sont nombreux. Est-ce que c'est réglementé en Côte d'Ivoire? Quelle est la situation de la réglementation des nouveaux produits et plus spécifiquement de la chicha? Allô, Dr. Boli? Oui, je suis là. Merci, euh, chère Léonce. Effectivement, tout ce qui est produit du tabac est réglementé et dans notre loi, la loi numéro 2019-676 du 23 juillet 2019, à son article 1 déjà défini tout ce qui est produit du tabac. Et 
les narguilés, qu'on appelle narguilés, chicha ou autres, Allô, professeur Boli, allô. Nous avons perdu le docteur Boli, certainement à cause de la connexion. Euh, alors, professeur Lecan et Céline, nous avons encore des questions, mais je vais prendre deux et nous allons clôturer le webinaire. Et nous allons vous demander encore ici les produits synthétisés, la nicotine synthétisée. Et il paraît qu'au Kenya, l'industrie avance l'argument que la nicotine synthétisée est, est, est utilisée. Et donc, la nicotine qui se trouve dans les nouveaux produits ne vient pas du tabac. Et quelle est votre position et quel conseil vous donnez aux équipes de surveillance et de riposte pour contrer ce, cet argument Des potes qui peut prendre la parole, euh, professeur Lecan ou Céline, sur euh, la nicotine synthétisée, que l'industrie défend que ce n'est pas donc, de la nicotine provenant du tabac et, et ne devrait pas être classifiée comme euh, donc, euh, produit du tabac, les produits qui contiennent ce type de nicotine. Comment contrer cela et quel argument vous proposez Yeah. Yes, I had responded earlier. Indeed, yes. um, this is where the uh, complexity for tobacco control um, is because if this, if, if indeed there is, you can synthesize nicotine pharmaceutical in a pharmaceutical way. Even though we doubt that all of that nicotine is synthesized, but we cannot get into that argument and I would not want us to get distracted into the argument of uh, and, and, and spending money to look for the biomarker of a synthesized or a, a, a farm grown nicotine. The point is we need to then define somewhat because um, to say once it's used for leisure, it must then be part of our tobacco control or it needs to be regulated. For example, in South Africa, the new bill is called Tobacco uh, Products and Electronic Delivery System Bill. So whether it contains nicotine or doesn't contain nicotine, whether the nicotine is from tobacco or not, you are going to have it regulated. And this, the fact that it's used for consumption by human, um, it's then going to be required to be regulated. So I think that is the way we should go. You can look at the South African uh, uh, bill. Uh, you can find it on the internet and see the way they define tobacco uh, and electronic del nicotine delivery products. Whether it contains nicotine or not will be covered by that legislation because nicotine is dangerous to health. Uh, whether it's synthesized or it's coming from tobacco, it will have cardiovascular problems and it will affect a pregnant woman's baby that is growing and also adolescent's brain that is growing. Uh, nicotine is not good for them. And of course, it's addictive. Oui, oui. Merci, prof. Une dernière préoccupation pour clôturer ce séminaire en ligne. Et c'est un participant qui souhaiterait voir si vraiment avec la situation qui s'aggrave que euh, les trois présentateurs nous ont présenté aujourd'hui, est-ce que cela ne vaut pas la peine que euh, la Convention, euh, l'OMS, les Nations Unies devraient sommer, et interpeller et même sanctionner les États qui ont ratifié la Convention et qui laissent euh, l'industrie et promouvoir ces produits au détriment de ces, de, 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 de ces populations. Qu'en pensez-vous Quelle réflexion vous faites Est-ce que l'ONU ou bien l'OMS ou la Convention ne devraient pas interpeller et sanctionner les États partis qui favorisent cette chose ah, 
Bonjour Léon, tu peux intervenir? Oui. Ah, docteur Boli? Alors. Oui, oui docteur Boli, que... vous pouvez réagir sur cette préoccupation. Oui. Je pense que l'auditeur a, enfin, a raison, le participant il a raison de dire cela. Mais avant même que l'OMS, l'ONU euh, ne puisse réagir, je crois que la première réaction doit venir des, des, des États qui sont partis même de, de ces organisations. Alors, il est donc important que chaque pays fasse un effort au niveau, à son niveau. D'abord parce que l'OMS a déjà fait un grand pas qui est... De, qui est de nous donner déjà un canevas de lutte anti-tabac qui, à travers la Convention cadre de l'OMS pour la lutte anti-tabac, la CCLAT. Et c'est à nous maintenant. Et au niveau des Nations Unies, c'est l'OMS qui porte la lutte anti-tabac parce que c'est l'ONU qui gère l'affaire santé. Et donc, nous sommes partis de l'OMS. Il y a même une représentation au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire et dans tous les pays de l'OMS. Alors, c'est à nous, États, qui avons même pris des lois de faire le lobbying et de faire le porting, d'exposer nos préoccupations à l'OMS pour qu'elle puisse faire remonter cela au plus haut niveau. Je pense que la lutte doit commencer d'abord par les pays et notamment par les différents acteurs qui sont en interne à travers les organisations de la société civile et le ministère de la Santé. C'est ma réaction sur ce point-là. Merci. Merci, docteur Boli. Je vais donc euh, arrêter ici et je voudrais voir si du côté du professeur Lecan ou de Céline, vous avez un mot encore à, à dire. Euh, j'ai voulu qu'on aborde toutes les questions qui ont été posées et dans la majorité des cas, nous avons abordé les questions. Et si vous avez un mot encore sur le sujet, vous pouvez encore le dire, professeur Lecan et Céline, brièvement. Professeur Lecan, Céline, bon, je crois que c'est bon. Je vais donc progresser. Je vois qu'ils n'ont plus. Ok. Um, yes. Sorry, I missed that. Ok. Ok. Donc, ils veulent quand même dire. Oh, ok. Un mot. No. Um, no. Thank you, colleagues. <coughs> I think uh, it's it's quite important that we do more of this. Um, the area of novel products. Uh, was intentionally made to be complex by the tobacco industry to confuse uh, tobacco control advocates and governments um, in terms of the science behind it. So I would like to encourage uh, that we keep it simple. Uh, keeping it simple means any product that is not for therapeutic use to assist a smoker to quit should not be allowed. And any product that's supposed to assist smokers to quit, they must show evidence as you do for any medicine in your countries. Uh, nicotine de replacement therapy, they go through a lot of investigation and like just any vaccine before the government will approve it. <clears throat> so what they are doing is to stand on one hand and say this is going to help smokers but they don't want to go through the process of testing a therapeutic medicine. So we should have a very simple uh, response. If you are saying it's going to help smokers, then take it through evidence-based. Until then, we do not have the big problem in Africa enough to start risking the lives of people to come and take these novel products. The problem of smoking is to be prevented in Africa. And that should be the focus. They should not distract all our energy, all the money for studying, and all the promotion and tobacco control effort. They are trying to distract us to these new novel products. We should spend that energy to get rid of the tobacco, the cigarette product and prevent, because we are the only one in the, in the world 
this content that has the opportunity to prevent the epidemic from getting the way it is in Europe and the US. And they are distracting us by giving us all these novel products so that the e-cigarettes can continue on the other line. So don't get distracted. If it's very simple regulation, we should say no other products. If it's going to help smokers, go through an evidence and get it registered as we register all medicines. Thank you. Merci, cher professeur. Alors, Céline, tu as un mot, sinon que nous sommes à la fin yes, de cette yes. session. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, I'd like to thank um, team and those who uh, made this possible in the discussions have uh, been very informative. Um, I just like to echo what has said that, you know, these novel products, this is where the industry, the discussions are going to be focusing on um, as tobacco control advocates and industry teams, uh, we need to and understand that this is just a tactic industry to circumvent around the policy have uh, tobacco control, but to still trying to maintain uh, and to remain in, in, uh, in, in, in their business because um, th these are companies known to produce lethal and deadly products. So by, you know, distracting us, coming up with new products to kind of take away off the goal, which is affecting uh, public health. So even the tactics that we've seen them using when it, traditional tobacco products, then they're still the same. And the, this engineering of these novel products is in itself that one way of uh, going around, uh, circumventing around the laws that we have to continue pushing the agenda. And the agenda is profits and more profits. So we need to continue remaining vigilant in this regard. Thank you. Merci, Céline. Uh, Dr. Boli, je crois que dans votre pays, vous étiez en train de nous dire que la loi prévoit Euh, euh, de ces produits et vous étiez en train de nous parler de cela. Euh, brièvement, pour finir, euh, dites-nous euh, quelles sont les avancées euh, en matière de législation euh, autour de ces produits. Et très brièvement et puis votre mot de fin sur cette euh, des réflexions que vous avez à partager avec les participants. Allez, merci, euh, cher Sessou. Alors, au niveau de la Côte d'Ivoire, nous Comme je le disais, euh, la législation ivoirienne, donc la loi de 2019, prévoit effectivement à son article 1 les produits de tabac qui sont en même temps associés et à, à la cigarette, aux produits de nouvelles technologies et aussi euh, la chicha et les, les, les narguilés. Donc, effectivement, la commercialisation, la consommation même de ces produits et euh, leur production, tout cela quand même est, est réglementé au niveau de la, de la loi que notre pays a, a prise. Et le véritable défi, défi aujourd'hui reste sa vulgarisation, vulgarisation qui va permettre de faire connaître la loi, de faire euh, connaître les... les, les, les de, faire en sorte que les consommateurs et même les vendeurs puissent comprendre que euh, l'activité qu'ils font ou bien la pratique qu'ils font est, est réglementée et que ça ne devait pas se faire n'importe comment. Et donc, ce que nous voulons aujourd'hui, c'est la vulgarisation de cette loi et surtout euh, la prise des, des, des instruments d'application, notamment des décrets et des, des arrêtés. Et je crois que à ce niveau, nous avons eu une séance de travail même la semaine passée avec le programme national de lutte anti-tabac, le PNTA, qui est en train de travailler sur la, les emballages, les emballages de, de, de tous ces produits. Donc la mise en œuvre donc, de la loi a commencé et nous travaillons aussi sur la traçabilité parce que euh, on avait un semblant de, de, de outils de traçabilité, identifier que nous tous nous connaissons et qui aujourd'hui est en train d'être abrogé pour que 
une autre réglementation puisse euh, être prise. Donc merci voilà un peu les défis. Je voulais dire merci à Aka, à Tissou, de nous avoir personnellement associé à cela. Et du merci, grand merci à ACBF qui nous soutient à toutes nos activités. Merci et au revoir à tous. Merci. Merci, Dr. Boli, et merci, professeur Lecan. C'est un honneur pour moi de vous avoir reçu pendant euh, presque deux heures prévues pour euh, ce séminaire. Ce séminaire en ligne qui est organisé conjointement entre, avec euh, SMU Actim et ATCA qui vise à renforcer les capacités des équipes de surveillance dans les pays. Et nous sommes heureux de dire à ceux qui ont représenté les équipes de surveillance ici aujourd'hui que vous, aurez, vous allez recevoir, vous et vos collègues tous, vous allez recevoir les présentations, vous allez recevoir les documents et l'audio qui a été enregistré pour ce séminaire. Et vous pourrez partager, quand vous aurez vos réunions de coordination, vous pouvez partager ces discussions avec vos collègues dans vos réunions de coordination. Et donc, nous sommes dans le temps et je vais donc arrêter la session ici, suivant l'horaire prévu qui tire vers sa fin. Et je vous remercie tous pour votre présence. Et à bientôt encore pour d'autres sessions que SMU, ATIM et ATCA organiseront à l'intention des équipes de surveillance. Et nous vous remercions. À bientôt. Bye bye.